Hey everybody, I thought this would be a super quick video showing a process that I've actually featured before. But then I ran into some issues with the vitrification and I tried to fix it with crystal clear powder. Ran into some issues. So clear powder or crystal clear? I've seen both mentioned online. See my experience next. Hey there, it's Jameson with a super quick video. I did one of these projects earlier in the summer. Uh, here's the link, I'll put that at the top of this video. Um, and I used opaque glass. It was um, a layer of clear with Egyptian blue and then uh, Tecta dots. This one is peacock blue, and so this one's transparent. I have a uh, customer who wanted me to do a commission for her. She is in love with this peacock glass and wanted a large oval platter, um, but didn't wanted some variation in it and some design in it, but nothing too um, too colorful. She wanted a kind of understated piece. Said she likes uh, mid-century modern. I'm not sure if we'll hit mid-century modern necessarily, but she kind of liked the funky idea of uh, random color displacement by using Tecta. So what I've done here uh, is a base layer of Tecta glass and then some clear powder in between, then a sheet of this bullseye peacock, transparent, and these are all dots, clear dots, that I made with Tecta earlier this summer when I took them up to a full fuse. This is just Tecta scrap that was turned into dots. And so I just placed them on here, no glue or anything, just set them on in, in kind of a random but planned pattern. And we're gonna take this to a full fuse and then uh, eventually slump it. So you can uh, see what that looks like next. Oh yeah, this looks really pretty. Now I am going to dust this entire thing with clear powder and refire it because can you see kind of the halo around the edges of those Tecta blobs? I get that when I do these projects and I don't know if I just use dirty Tecta. I thought it was all cleaned up. Uh, and then, you know, some of them, look at that one, almost the whole thing comes across cloudy. So I'm gonna do a layer of clear powder across this whole thing and do another firing to get a nice shiny gloss all across the entire thing and hopefully get rid of some of those dirty halos. But in general, I'm pleased with this first firing. So what I realized after the fact is that I wasn't using bullseye clear powder, I was using bullseye crystal clear powder. And can you see that haze on there? I went to the internet for more. Okay, there has been a lot of off-camera drama <laughs> with this piece. Um, I knew when it came out that the um, blobs would uh, have little rings around them because that's just been my case with when I'm using a tech to dot on um, one of these color diffusion pieces, I always end up with a little ring around it. And it may not even be noticeable to the client, but it bugs the crap out of me. So I dusted the whole thing with clear powder, which is what I've done before, and I refired it and it came out and it had this, um, I don't know, kind of foggy look to it. And it really kind of pissed me off. And I thought that perhaps it was dust from kiln paper. So that was the second firing. So I flipped it, I put more powder on it and I refired it thinking, oh, that's fine, I'll just use the backside. So that was firing number three and it came out that same way. So, um, I was thinking, well, maybe I didn't clean my glass well enough, although I usually think I do a good job of that stuff. So I cleaned the glass super well, brand new clean rag, um, and then reapplied dust or powder again, and I put it in for the fourth firing, thinking that's going to do it. And I'll be damned if it didn't come out again with um, this, you know, kind of cloudiness to it. You can see here in the video exactly what I'm looking at. You can see the reflection in the light there. Man, it pissed me off. <laughs> so um, I went to the interwebs to ask the question and inadvertently I had been using crystal clear powder, which I in my head thought was the right kind because I had just emptied a jar and so I was gonna use it again or you know use some more and realize that crystal clear is what was probably causing that problem. Clear powder 
is what you want to use with Bullseye um, to fix, uh, you know, imperfections in the in the top. There's a link to Bullseye's website about this. I, I'll post a photo, or excuse me, I'll post a link in the um, video comments. Clear powder, not crystal clear. So this thing's been in for four firings. Now tonight, um, really out of frustration, and this, this may not work, um, I have taken 400 grit sandpaper or a, a diamond pad to it to kind of rough it up again, take off some of that layer of uh, pr problem that I had. I don't know that I took enough off, but you might be able to hear it in my voice. I'm just exhausted at this point. My muscles are sore. <laughs> so I'm going to clean this super well fresh rag again, et cetera, et cetera. Then my process is going to be to dust it again. So there's some theory that you could put um, some like spray A on this and fire it, which may work. I just don't know that I want to put spray A on it and try that right now. This is that kind of boron nitride, um, or I mean not, not boron nitride, uh, borox mix. Some people make homemade, some people have um, super spray, spray A, whatever it's called. Um, and I've got some and I could use it, I just kind of don't want to. You could just put it in just like this and try to fire polish it, take it up to a full fuse and fire polish it. Um, that may work too. Uh, another option which I'm going to do is to dust more powder on this thing and try again. So I am going to dust the whole thing with powder, take it up to about 1450, hold it for 15 minutes or so. And then fingers crossed, it comes out tomorrow and it looks ready for slumping. Okay, I am delighted to report that after a slump at, or excuse me, a full fuse at 1450 for um, 15 minutes, it is perfect. So the clear powder worked, sanding that down worked. Um, this was a, a perfect fix. We have a nice glossy sheen to the surface and we're ready to go into the slump. Okay, here it is on the mold and um, you know it is slightly bigger than the mold all the way around so you can see the mold underneath and how the glass overhangs on the edge. Uh, show you a little bit about so there's a gap between the the actual mold and the glass itself but I'm not worried about that overhang because the middle of the glass is going to sag down into the mold and kind of pull those outer edges. Now this is about the extreme of how much I would prefer to have it hanging over. I actually would prefer not to have it hanging over that much, but I think what this is going to do is give me a relatively full platter that truly fills the mold as the glass slumps down in the middle and pulls those edges in. So I'm not worried about the edges draping over the edge of the mold because that overlap is about, I don't know, a half an inch. So I think I'm gonna be good. Let's uh, say a quick prayer to the kiln gods and we see what it looks like tomorrow night. Okay, I just opened this up and it looks really good. They, I don't have any overhang. It actually formed kind of a nice little lip there, which is great. I don't have cold working equipment. So uh, let's pull this out and see what it looks like out of the mold. Okay, here it is. I'm really, really pleased. I This was a used mold that I bought from somebody that I hadn't used yet myself. Uh, so I'm excited to see kind of how this turns out. It's a nice platter. I'm pleased with it. It sits nice and flat. Looks like I have a little inconsistency in the surface of my mold, so I um, maybe need to sand down my kiln wash a little bit better. Um, but generally, I'm really pleased. That extra glass kind of formed a lip on here, which looks uh, uh, nice. I don't have cold working equipment. So I'm not really gonna do anything more to this other than call it complete. Uh, if you learned anything during this, uh, give me a thumbs up, drop in a comment and subscribe to the channel. Have a great one, everybody. Bye-bye.